and now to health. The Honorable Minister have directed the Chief Executive of Polibu to at the matter of urgency make the post open and issue statements to the general public for Ghanaians to know that the place is open, the amount of money that we are supposed to pay, the good service as we move on to see whether there will be an increment or not. We have not spoken about that week. But we are hoping that they will comply with Honorable Minister Sarate. Well, so we know that there were concerns that Kolibu raised, at least. We're waiting for that statement to find out the details of the opening. But let me find out first. Is it taking immediate effect, the opening yes. of the renal dialysis yes. unit? Yes, from the directive of the Honorable Minister, supposed to take immediate effect. And then, the, the chief executive will know who has also assured that he will work for us, that we hope that he will take uh, consideration, consider the directive of the Honorable Minister and take the, the opening of the university. But listen to the CEO, he's more than willing to open, but the debt, outstanding debt, the 4 million cities debt, is the main concern, plus the cost of consumables subsequently. Has that all been sorted, you'd say? Yes, as part of their discussion, of which I, I know, the Honorable Minister has addressed a number of issues regarding the outstanding and then the differences that will come after. And so, they've spoken about it, and it's had a stakeholders uh, discussion. A lot has been done. And we are sure that 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 will be taken care of. That was the uh, PRO of the Ministry of Health, Isaac Balfe, assuring that uh, the renal dialysis unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital will be operational. Uh, and of course, that will be open to outpatient. Uh, but 24 hours after this assurances were given, uh, the outpatient department remains closed. Yesterday, uh, there was a bipartisan call in Parliament. Uh, for the facility to be open. Parliament as a whole should be deeply concerned about the persistent closure of the renal unit outpatient department at Kolibu Teaching Hospital. This situation has far-reaching implications for the well-being of dialysis patients in Ghana and raises serious questions about the commitment of government to transparency and accountability in our healthcare institutions. In the initial case of the the facility's closure was attributed to scarcity of essential medical consumables required for dialysis. When dialysis medical consumables were finally procured, the service saw an unprecedented increase in fees from 380 Ghana cities to 765.42. The Minister of Health and the hospital administration must, as a matter of priority, address this situation. The denial of essential health care services is a severe violation of patients' rights and a breach of public trust. We implore the government to work diligently with the hospital to, re to rectify this situation and uphold its commitment to providing accessible and affordable health care service to all citizens. The paramount objective must be the prompt reopening of the renal unit outpatient department and the provision of essential subsidies to ensure that healthcare services are accessible and affordable for all citizens. Today, I fully associate myself with the call for the minister to be programmed to appear. That is something we cannot compromise on. He must appear. And especially in a matter about the lives of our citizenry, we can't take for granted. It can happen to any of us. And so, I'm fully associated with that call. It's about the lives of our people. Whatever it takes, he must appear. We must program him to appear and to brief us. Immediately, the Kolebu Rena unit should be open immediately. And there are some other actions that have been taken. That is why I'm emphasizing the call. As we we need you to bless this call that the minister should be programmed to come and make this statement formally on the floor of parliament. He can't sit in his ministry and engage the media and make this statement. He must come to the representative of the people and make this statement formally in the House. Uh, that uh, the majority uh, with uh, Frank Anot Dompre there, ranking member on the Health uh, Committee, 
Uh, and uh, we know that lots and lots of MPs are equally raising uh, concern about this um, whole situation, about why the OPD is not being uh, open to the uh, renal patients. Joining us in studio now is once more is president of the Renal Patients Association, uh, Kujapan for Ahinkra. He was with me uh, at the start of the week. He's still here simply because there's no update. Um, and, and it's sad. It saddens us uh, here at uh, Joy News that government has not opened the facility in spite of all of the directives that we've heard from uh, uh, from the health ministry. The directives also coming through from, uh, I believe, the uh, presidential spokesperson. There was an assurance. The minister says he's giving the directives to the hospital to open the facility. And yet, it's still not open. Yeah. You've checked. Yes. So we are correct. That's not open. It's not open. To the OPD. The unit itself is working, right. but they are just doing the inpatient and, and the emergencies. But the OPD is still not open to right. us. And for, for those who do not appreciate, uh, you know, uh, the issues that we're talking about here, because we raised that, um, you know, at the start of the week, for those who might have missed that, how crucial is this to, to your health, you know, as renal patients? Thank you. Uh, very crucial. The point is, once you are, you are at the end stage of the kidney dialysis, your only survivor is on the dialysis machine, or you do a transplant. And this dialysis machine requires you to do three times a week, mm -hmm. a session a week. If you're not able to afford, you do once a week. So now, if you don't get it, you are going to your grave. So it's very crucial and very essential. Mm. So we don't know what is this, opening, not opening, we don't, and we are not even hearing anything from them since yesterday. Right. Not even, I was there yesterday, I've been there today. The unit is open, emergencies and ward cases. OPD, zero. Your members are still complaining about this. Uh, I, I, I'm just wondering how they're feeling now, knowing that nothing is being done about the situation. How, how, my brother, how will you feel? You are left in your own way. I mean, if it is open, you are going fine. But mm -hmm. now, so if it is not open, you cannot walk in. I, mean, I don't want to exaggerate. Yeah. I keep saying most of the OPD cases are now going back to the ward because they are not feeling ward. They are sick. They are going back to the ward. And I was saying the other time that I came here, all this thing could have solved when the taxes on this consumer boards have been striped off so that the private dialysis centers can be given these services to them at a very moderate uh, rate that they can go in there and do. Because now all the pressure is going to be on Kolebu. All the pressure is going to be on Kolebu because the private, private person goes for the goose, he brings it. You don't expect him to do it free of charge. The consumer boards are very expensive. We understand, we've checked, it's very expensive. So if the taxes are waived off, they can also be supported. What's called a having challenges. At least if you have about 200, you can walk to any dialysis center and get your session done and go. And the other day, we were also talking, uh, or perhaps exploring the possibility of having uh, other health facilities to just open up to have you, you know, more of the dialysis equipment. Yeah, it should be done. Because like Accra here, I know 37 is doing, police hospital is doing, uh, Kolebu, the main hospital, the other public hospital, I'm not really sure, but those that I'm sure is about um, Kolebu 37 and police hospital, they are doing it. Now, like I am keep saying, most of the people travel all the way from um, Koforidria, Begro, Kibi, and come to Kolebu. So if this, those uh, regional hospitals are having it, their dialysis machine, it will help. It will bring some of these pressures down. Because one will get up, drawn, sit in the car all the way from Begro, come to Accra, finish, travel back to, maybe there's one in Kofuria, it will help. So the other, the facility needs to be open to other centers. Uh, how expensive is it now, right? And, and let, let's, let's do that analysis. How expensive is it now affording this dialysis treatment simply because the OPD uh, cases are not being, you know, looked after at calling? Very expensive. As I'm talking to you now, some of the places that we go, the information we are gathering, they have increased their prices, starting from next month. Really? I'm telling you. Because the, the, now the pressure is coming on these yes, facilities. Yes, the pressure is coming well, on yeah. them. And everyone would like to prefer to go to a proper place to get his dialysis. Mm -hmm. So now those good ones amongst us, they are now increasing their prices from next month. So you can imagine, already what we are paying, we cannot even pay. Out of this, people are dying. Yesterday, uh, you did a news on one of the guys who died. Yeah. That's nine children. Mm -hmm. I know him very well. We go, we sit down, we chat. He has left his children, nine kids. They are gone. 
if Kolebu was working, probably he wouldn't die up now, die by the time that he died. So it's very expensive. It's very, very and it's to our detriment of our health. Mm. You need it to clean your system. system right. You need to clean it. You eat, you drink. Right. It's choked. You have to go and clean it so that you can enjoy life more. That means everybody will die, but for now, this is what we need to do to right. live right. a little bit. So we are begging them. If they say they've reopened the place, they should let us see the action because this is about life and death time. Somebody can die today, 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 today. But if he's able to get or be on the machine even for 30 minutes, he will live. can save their lives. Uh, could you, the, the point about what options you're looking at now, simply because government is not yielding, um, for now, there's you know, no other option except to use the private facilities. What's the next line of action for, for your group now? Do you intend to pile more pressure? Do you intend to call the health minister, for instance, uh, who's not appearing yet in parliament because of this? That is exactly what we want to do. But one thing is that the strength is not there. Some of us, we are yeah. fortunate that maybe we are able to move out. Move but out. the strength is there. Most of the people are either on wheelchair or they need to be assisted to walk. We will part the pressure, but we can't force them. We are just pleading to them that I heard the minority, uh, minority guys. Speak. Yes. It can happen to anybody. Now, kidding is no more whether you drink alcohol or you don't drink alcohol. It's, it can happen to anybody to come to this stage. So we are just begging them. We are pleading with them. They should consider us. They should do something about yeah. it. Just, just between the start of the week and where we are now, have you made some more attempts at, you know, just trying to get some response on, on this concern? Yes, we've done it, but there's nothing. Like I said yesterday, when the news came, I was going for my lab report at Hollywood. I went there, I went through, and nobody doesn't want to talk. All that they hear that you're also waiting for instructions from above before they can do anything. The instructions they have there, they're supposed to do the ward cases and that of the emergency. If they don't have... They cannot do anything. They are just waiting for instruction. But maybe start with the OPD. Then they will start. If there's no instruction, as I was even coming to this studio, yeah. I called a friend. He said, oh, still, they've not heard anything. So what are we doing? But what can we do? We can only appeal to the government that we are begging them. They should do something about it. And my brother, you see, if Kolebu is open today, that is not the end of the matter. The Kolebu CEO has made it clear that if they open it at a price of 380 we will need almost like one million Ghana cities to, every month. to subsidize it to subsidize all it. every month. So what are, all this yeah. have to come in, even though we want the place to open so that we can start something. But all this will have to come in. So we are just begging them. They should open up the place to us. Yeah. And we should have small. We should enjoy life small. It's, it's really sad. Okay, how about you know uh, the private facilities meeting them as a group? And trying to, you know, appeal to their moral conscience just to beat down the price, you know, as a collective, uh, you know, group, group of uh, renal patients. Well, how about that? Because I'm trying to, you know, just juggle through my mind the, the kind of options and solutions you might, you might be in need of right now. This private dialysis centers, that is where we go. Mm. We, we speak to them and we start and we talk to them. Right. What do we do? And they will tell you, listen, we've gone for the consumer bus. Is there? I've paid this amount of taxes on it. Maybe I borrowed money right. to pay for those taxes. So what can I do? I need to recruit my money back. That's what they are telling us. Or the government. What the government can also do is that this subsidy they are trying to bring. Yes. You have to look at the private place to, or maybe take this. We will pay this. Number of people that okay. will come. Okay. So 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 as in in terms of a subsidy going to some of these private facilities, those handling the dialysis cases. Yes. Yes, so mm -hmm. maybe because, like I keep saying, Kolebu cannot handle the RENA cases that we Hello. have, even in Accra, right. not the whole Ghana. Right. Kolebu cannot handle it. There are a number of machines, they have about 15 machines working now. 15 machines, OPD, we are normally about 250. Now, 250 is four hours, four hours. So sometimes. So, so even if within a day, they can't do they it? They can't do it. Mm. They can, so they, we have, they have categorized us. Somebody will go on Monday, somebody will go on Tuesday, somebody will go on Wednesday, four hours. A day, the at most that they can do is about four sessions. Now, we have people on admission, a number of them, they also did it. So if they work with the OPD small, they have to go and work with the, um, the, those on admission. So, so the private sector will need to come in. 
to absorb them because most of the private centers have about 30 or 40 patients. Mm -hmm. This is not Kolibu, yeah. and I cannot speak for them. I'm talking about Kolibu. We are talking about 250. And by the time we go, it's about five months, some days now. I'm sure by now, the new cases that they've done, they are normally about 100 plus, which they will come and join with the OPDO. So 300 more we are going. So something drastically has to be done about this thing. You should look at the private sector, assist them, give them tax waivers so that the thing can come down. So they can also be absorbed. Somebody does not want to come on air to come and talk about this. People are hiding it. I keep saying we have a lot of big men amongst us. You cannot mention names. We see them, we talk. You cannot mention them. So if he has got his money, he can just simply go to a private sector and do it. Case closed. So they should look at that one too. We are just begging them. And brother, people are dying, you know, 19 solid people gone from me after now. So let, let me give you an opportunity again, uh, at least, and, and that's all we can do uh, from our side and also trying to uh, solicit support from whichever quarters it will come from to support your group. But if you had the opportunity once more of speaking to the conscience of the health minister, uh, the president, uh, and all those who matter, you know, just to make a difference in this case, what, what would that message be? Um, you see, I said, uh, it, it can happen to anybody. Nobody knows tomorrow. So once again, all that I can tell them that we beg them is to open the place and make Kulibu more accessible. Secondly, I think the most important thing, I might not be the perfect person to talk about, right. they should look at the taxes on the consumables and the machine. Because now, kidney is very common. Very, very common. I, I mean, we have nine-year-old boy on the machine. Mm. We have 13, we have 16. When you take those people out, the age range is normally, I think it's between 20 to 30 years. You can check the bracket there. So it can happen to anybody. So they should look at the taxes. I'm just begging the minister, if maybe he's hearing me, they should once yeah. again... If it's not, he, he should be hearing you by now, I believe. Once again, they should look at the taxes component on the consumables and the machine so that the private sector can absorb most of this thing, so that there will not be much pressure on um, Kolibu and maybe other dialysis centers. So it's a plea. We are just, they should look at the taxes on the component again. Mm. Uh, and in the meantime, you're also calling on uh, you know, benevolent individuals who might yes. want to support? Yes, mm. yes. The other day I said it. Yes. I said it. Please, once again, um, the big churches, Church of Pentecost, ICGC, Duncan Williams, whatever, whatever church, we are just begging them. They should take one Sunday, all the money they will collect, they should come and give it to the Kolebu Reina unit, so that at least it will bring the pressure down. We know it's not that easy, but the lesser that they can do, once again, let me thank uh, um, Prof. Bwedin Yamiche. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Bwedin Dr. Bwedin Yamiche. Uh, he has done his bit, but Oliver asked for more, if he can still do more. Oh, you still want more, him to oh, support yeah, some more? more. Right. Mm. People are dying, you know. Mm. The accessibility, is I mean, for, to the dialysis. Now, the fistula is 7,000. If your fistula gets poor and you need to redo, it's 7,000. The neckline now is between, between 4,000. The femoria is around 2,000. So we still need money. We still need money. So we are begging all those churches, Ibrahim, Mama, and Co. Please come to our aid. Mm. We beg them. Uh, and of course, uh, that, that's been our uh, job here at Joy News, trying to support the Renal Patients Association. You could come over to Joy News uh, and, of course, pledge your support, whichever way you feel you can support this group, and uh, just do that. And, of course, uh, we will partner you along that. Uh, journey, but uh, grateful could you that you're spending some time uh, with us here uh, on the poll So you need to support them uh, We're also asking government to try as much as possible to come through and to support this good cause uh, We're asking for the OPD at least that could able to be open uh, so more and more people can have access um, to the dialysis treatment